morning everybody. It is Friday the 12th of July, my goodness, already and you can see the nights and the mornings just starting to uh, draw in slightly, which is a bit depressing. It's a nice morning, we've had a bit of rain in the night, not a lot, just enough to dampen the ground. I just wanted to give you a quick update on my root vegetables. Um, these are the long carrots that I planted in these old compost bins. And uh, this last day or two they've put on a bit of growth. You can see the new lime green leaves there. So I presume that the roots have now hit the compost right in the very bottom and they're getting a feed kick from that. Next on them look quite thick. I've left these collars on, just thought it might help with the carrot root fly. Don't know if they'll get that high. I haven't covered these. And uh, parsnips. They're all looking well, they are. Now, when I fill that um, 200 litre bucket, got drainage holes in the bottom. Never thought that uh, they'd grow that long. But looking at the tops of them, and uh, they look really well. I wish I'd taken the bottom out of that because they're not going to grow any longer than three or four foot, are they? We do these silly things. I think we're doing right at the time. But we live and learn. And these are my other carrots. I think there's nine in there. They're long carrots. And uh, they're looking quite well. Oh, they're looking very well for me. I'm, I'm really pleased with them. Years and years ago when I had an allotment, I did try some long carrots. And I think they got about to about 12, 15 inches. And they were forked and they were awful. <laughs> that plot there was full of potatoes and it's half empty now. All my first earlies have gone. Um, very tasty too, I must say. But I did make a big mistake of not putting enough fertiliser in. I saw other people putting it in by the handful and I thought, that's too much. You're only going to get the taste of the fertiliser and you, you'll lose the flavour of the potatoes. So I suffered with yield, whereas I did get... I've had some lovely tasting potatoes and I'm sure everybody else's potatoes tasted lovely. But definitely more fertilizer. Um, I only put a little bit of fish blood and bone in and um, a handful of wood ash. The first two buckets I had both had scab and I haven't had any scab on any of the others since. Why that was I've no idea but um, yeah funny how it goes. But all I got left in now to start on on the second earlies is um, Enya and um, Charlotte. Both a nice salad potato. And my main crop potatoes, well that's as high as me that is. Um, I certainly won't be putting them in a block like this again. Watering is a nightmare. They're four across and five deep that way. And getting to the middle is, is awful. But Luckily the wind did just break, well not break, it folded the centre over and uh, it allowed me to get some access over the top. But they look well, they do. And just down there I've got a couple of small tubs of Desiree, a couple of potatoes I managed to pick up. And uh, I just want those for seed, so, so I've got a different variety that I can choose from. Not sure which ones I'm going to grow next year, whether these will all be part of the equation or not. Um, keep an eye out for the blight. It can hit any time now. That could be signs on the edges, but uh, there's no powdery mildew under the leaves or anything. So at the moment they're looking quite well. Uh, they are sarcomeras on the far end. Blue Danube, part of the same family. 
and um, these here are Picasso and I grown Picasso before and I always do get blight on Picasso I always have to cut the tops off uh, a bit earlier than what I would like to so that's the potatoes it's getting harder and harder to walk around this garden now some of the sunflowers are making an appearance These haven't grown as big as I expected. Um, I thought some of them would be dinner plate size and a lot taller. They're just over six foot to these. Um, I presume they won't grow much more seeing as they've uh, started to put the flowers out. I'm going to show you the sweet peas. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm going to let them all go to seed now while there's vigour in the plant. Both lots and um, I'll be saving the seed and uh, possibly be giving some of those away. If I can take you down to the carrot bed now these carrots I've watered these once since I put them in that was last week. Now, that mesh there I put one of those on top of the uh, bed where the carrots are and put one carrot to each square and I can't remember the number now but I think it was over 400 carrots in here and uh, last week I gave it five watering cans just bear with me one second um, I, when I sieved the soil to go in this bed I did wet every layer as you can see I've got no chance of getting to the middle and um, we have had some out of here I'll just um, they look nice no damage on any of them as you can see it took me about a good hour to um, sow these. These are sweet candles so they'll get a bit more growth on them yet. Um, it took me over an hour to sow these individually and uh, most of them came up and I did re-sow and uh, it was well worth the effort. I've had no thinning, just put the fleece over and left them alone. Not had to do anything with them. So that's, uh, I'm pleased with those. They're about six inches, um, but uh, they should grow a bit further yet. And there's no sign of any damage on those whatsoever, not even from any slugs or anything. So, yeah, I'm pleased with the carrots. And uh, just in front. Celeriac. Those are, are coming and starting to come on. Uh, you do take the outside leaves off these as they grow, keep them well watered. Um, but they look quite well. It looks like they might get crowded out by the uh, slug there. There's one or two slugs about now this time of year. Uh, parsnips they look well nice green they are but it looks like they could crowd out the celeriac as you can see they all look fine another slug there look you get a bit of uh, rain at night and uh, it soon brings them out when it's damp leeks there coming on. Apparently when the leaves twist like that on the leeks they're doing well. So I believe. And uh, I'll just take you across to beetroot. Something's been nibbling that. 
could be sparrows, although I don't see many sparrows up at this end. You get them around the house, but not up this end. And you can see the, the moles still here. These are golden beets. Never grown these before, it's the first year. And uh, we had the first one the other night. Uh, boiled and cold sliced on a salad and it was very nice. Um, I will grow them again but they don't have quite the bite and the sweetness of the red ones. But having said that, I, like I say, I will grow them again. And you can see I've still got the leaf beet miner waiting for the results of um, Terry's trial with the neem oil on the leaves. Doesn't seem to have stopped the plants growing, but it doesn't look very good. And this is something I want to eradicate. Turnips, fur sowings, we couldn't keep up with them and they've gone to seed. Um, I don't think I'll leave them there. Might leave one or two in perhaps to see, see how I feel when I, when I start pulling them out. But the second sowings, you can see they're all, you can see how many you're getting in such a short row. We've had a lot of those and uh, just couldn't keep up with them. And then beetroot. These are the red ones. They're all looking good. Some of these are the half stumped ones. This front one here, this row here is the stumped I think. And you can see what I mean by stumped. That'll be on the table tonight. Um, once I managed to get these going, couldn't get any going in the greenhouse at all. The modules, nothing. And I think it was two sowings out his side as well. But when they did come, they have come uh, quite well. Love beetroot. Hot as a veg, cold sliced, and also um, pickled. Uh, just a spot of sugar in the vinegar makes a big difference. So they all look quite well. And uh, I did just want to show you, I know it's not a root veg, but the ideal way to, when you picture your broccoli, put your cross in. I don't know if you can see. And you get your little broccolettes. I'll just bring you underneath the netting so as you can see a bit better. You can see the broccolettes. Sounds like a group from the 60s, doesn't it? And uh, by putting a cross in the top, you've got uh, at least four nice florets there. So they'll be for the weekend. Um, I've also seen on the cabbage, just can't see where, where they are at the moment, but also it looks like the leaf miner might be on the cabbage as well. Um, I don't know if that's something that somebody knows about, but I have seen the same sort of markings on the cabbage. So, just a quick update on my root veg. Um, very busy time now harvesting, my always busy time being a gardener. But uh, this time of year, you can really puff your chest out and enjoy your labours. Take good care everybody. Many thanks for your comments and thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already and have a lovely weekend everybody. Thank you. Bye.